Hello and welcome. Cuff me up here, and this is my first ever review. Originally, I had this huge script, uh, this huge script planned out, and all that, and I planned on editing specific things into the video at specific points, trying to, you know, put in a joke every now and then, but uh, it just ended up not working well at all. So I'm just gonna, uh, kind of just say what my thoughts are on the game. And the game is Darksiders 2. First, I want to discuss the good stuff. Um, it is a lot of fun. The combat works, the platforming works, it all works, and it works well. Um, yeah, overall the game's fun, the puzzles are great, uh, the story, it, it, it's good. <laughs> um, they really add this game adds a lot more to the Darksiders lore than the first one. And for those of you who don't know, in Darksiders 2, you play as Death, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and your quest is to save your brother War from, uh, well, from the Charred Council, considering he's being the one accused of starting the apocalypse. And your quest is to bring back man, is to bring back mankind. So then that whole apocalypse thing and you know destroying humanity will just kind of go away considering humanity would be back to life anyway um yeah this the lore they really uh enriched it in this game the darksiders lore they added a lot to it they added well it, it it's just very to me it was interesting playing throughout the game the lore the, all they added was very interesting including these colossal, like, dwarven people. I know that sounds ironic, considering I'm calling them colossal dwarven people, but... Uh, you know how most dwarves are kind of bearded, they're blacksmiths, stuff like that. Well, these things called the Makers, you get introduced to them pretty quickly, and, uh... Yeah, that, apparently they create planets using their forges and stuff like that, and they create these living beings of stone called constructs. It's... To me, it was very interesting playing through Darksiders. So, I've discussed... Yeah, the gameplay mechanics work well. The combat is similar to that of Darksiders and God of War. And it, it's fun. The, uh... The platforming is similar to the... Similar of that to Prince of Persia. Which, again, is fun. <laughs> and, uh... The puzzles and the dungeons will remind you a little bit of Legend of Zelda, which, again, isn't a bad thing. The only problem this game really has when it comes to all those gameplay mechanics is it's not very original in, in many aspects at all. Overall, it's... <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's not exactly the most original game on the planet when it comes to gameplay mechanics. But that's not a bad thing considering it takes all these elements from all these other from all the other from all these other games and it blends them to get and it blends them together very well. Now, yeah, I I had a lot of fun with the game. Apparently, well, let's the game I was able to beat the story mode in about 18 hours. I imagine there's much more time considering they have new game plus and uh crap what's it called? Oh, they also have a ton of side quests you can do. Well not a ton, but a couple that could also keep you entertained. Uh I think I've discussed most of the good points. The bosses. They do the bosses great in this game. You usually are fighting bosses that are like twenty times your size, even bigger. And yeah, they're they're just a lot of fun. <laughs> This game has a lot of good things to it. So, now, I want to discuss... Oh, it also has great art design. The way... Yeah. Now I want to discuss the bad. The bad... All the bad things to this game mainly come in from a technical standpoint. This isn't exactly the best port in the world. In fact, it's not exactly that good at all. A thing they do give you, though, is uh, resolution options and the option to change the key bindings. 
That's the, I think there are also a couple other options, but like vertical sync, even though I don't really think it works. And yeah, that, they didn't give you many options when it comes to the PC port. Plus, the game, it, it doesn't look the best graphically. The texture quality is not that high. I mean, when you're standing way back and you're looking at these landscapes, they look awesome. But once you start getting up closer, you start seeing the technical blemishes when it comes to the textures, and you're just... Uh, it, it's just incredibly disappointing. Uh, there is no anti-aliasing. <laughs> as far as I know, there was no option for it. Uh, this was obviously a kind of rushed PC port. And what are some other bad things? Oh, occasionally I've had the audio just stop working from time to time. Well, half of the audio would cut out, but then again, I don't know if that's the game or if that can my computer. It's probably not my computer, but I'm, uh, <laughs> it could be the game. I'm just putting that out there. Um, when it comes to the cutscene, a thing that really bothered me when the cut when it when it comes to the cutscenes, a thing that really bothered me was that um, they were so easily skipped. You just barely tap the wrong button, and the whole cutscene will be skipped making it so you miss out on a story. I ended up missing out on three cutscenes, and because there's no theater mode, the only way to view them again is to either go on to some YouTube, either go on to YouTube searching for it, or to replay the game entirely, which was very annoying. And the audio tech problems have caused me to restart the game a couple of times, because uh, I get headaches when there's only half the audio going. Anyway, um... Yeah, this game, it really had a chance to be just amazing. In fact, a favorite of mine, if it weren't for all these technical blemishes that kept popping up and ruining the experience. Oh, and Darksiders 2 is much more of its own type of RPG compared to the first one that was much more Legend of Zelda-like. Like in this new one, you have tons of different equipment. You get a bunch of loot to equip keep equipping the best one, tossing away others, selling the ones you don't need anymore to vendors, stuff like that. And overall, um, well, I forgot we were discussing the bad, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, the technical problems, and the bad PC porting. Alright, final wrap up, uh, oh, plus there are are a ton of collectibles throughout the game. Uh, yeah, most of the side missions, in fact, are just collectible missions. That where there are things you have to collect on your pathway through the dungeons. Although occasionally they'll have you backtracking through dungeons you've already completed in order to get a couple collectibles, which is annoying. But then again, that yeah, it, it, it's just annoying. <laughs> And, okay, we discussed, it's not that graphically impressive, bad PC port, and the technical blemishes are what bring it down. And the easily skipped cutscenes with no theater. And when it comes to the good, all the core mechanics work. They work well, they're fun. The combat's fun, the platforming's fun, the puzzles are fun, the dungeons are fun. They're, the story it can become interesting, although there is a point where it just kind of slows down and feels like you're not getting much accomplished. Oh, and another bad point is the story ends very abruptly with a disappointing end boss. I'm just going to say that. For me, it was very disappointing compared to these colossuses, or these epic bosses I had fought before. Nah. Uh, Huh. I think I've discussed all the main points. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, but flawed, technically. And... So, in the end, I was having a lot of trouble deciding between a 7 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10. My scale is similar, will be similar to that of Angry Joe's than the rather, rather than the average uh, reviewer where 5 out of 10 means an average game, where 
any other reviewer, a 7 out of 10 would be average. In the end, I decided to give this game an 8 out of 10 because... Well, the build I played, the technical issues, were a big problem for me. They were incredibly annoying. And I have a pretty powerful PC, so... <laughs> I know it's not my computer with the problems. But it did run fast. It normally ran at a regular frame rate. It was fine in that department. But when it came to the look, uh, audio, all that stuff, problems would come up. And overall, I, yeah, I give Darksiders 2 a 8 out of 10. It is a great game, and I recommend you get it, but I probably recommend you get it on console considering the bad job they do with the PC port, but then again there may be problems on the console that I'm not aware of. So, it was fun. I do recommend it if you played, uh, if you enjoy and play God of War, Devil May Cry, Legend of Zelda, Prince of Persia, any of those games, I recommend you play this. This is a ton of fun. But the technic if technical issues are, you know, can be end up being a huge problem for you, you might want to skip out on this game, because it is not, it's not even close to being the most advanced game when it comes to looks or anything in that, in the technical department. Anyway, um, great game, I recommend it, 8 out of 10. I hope you found this review helpful. I will leave links to other reviews. If you well, if you didn't find my review helpful, I'll leave links to other first impressions and reviews that I found. Well, that I will find. I haven't any, I haven't really watched any yet. <laughs> I will leave other reviews, first impressions of from other people who are much more experienced than me down in the description. So, in, just in case you didn't find this helpful, go ahead and watch one of those to get another perspective on the game. Personally, I would recommend it to anybody who enjoyed one of those earlier games I mentioned. It does borrow a lot, so if you're looking for something fresh and original, you might want to skip out on this. And yeah, that's my thoughts on the game. I recommend it. 8 out of 10.